So one of the first questions we tend to ask anyone when we meet them is what do you do for a living? And from that one question, we make assumptions on their type of lifestyle, what drives them, even their moral standpoint. What we do defines who we are, but the world as we know it's changing. And over the next 10 years, 50% of all of today's jobs will no longer exist. Some, even most experts argue that the robots are coming and they're gonna take all of our jobs. The automation of many existing processes happening at top speed. And lots of people are rightly worried about whether or not they're gonna have jobs in a few years time. Others are completely unaware that they should be worried. Now, whilst this might sound scary, the good news is that we've done all of this before. I was born in South Wales and as a boy, I remember watching the miners strikes on television every night. And I was too young to understand what was going on, but I do remember there was a feeling of worry a feeling of anger in our communities. People were afraid. They were afraid for their jobs, for their livelihoods, for the future of their families. At one point, coal mining was the biggest industry in the UK. There were thousands of mines and over a million people worked in them. Today, there's hardly any mines left and nobody works there. It's an example of an industry and its jobs that have almost completely vanished. The good news is that we've overcome that over the last 200 years, we've seen huge changes in the world of work. They've all been technology driven and they've all lessened the need for people. We're at the dawn of another industrial revolution, another period of technology led change. And the changes that we're gonna see are gonna be rapid and they're gonna be very dramatic. We're seeing a combination of breakthroughs in fields like 3D printing, driverless cars, all exploding at once. Major new advances in artificial intelligence are changing our perception of what computers can and can't do. One of my favourite quotes is from the writer of 2001 A Space Odyssey, Arthur C. Clarke. And he's got a brilliant line where he says that any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We're about to see a whole new wave of technologies that are going to make us feel as if we're living inside the grounds of Hogwarts. Some of these technologies are going to happen a lot quicker than most people realise. Driverless cars is one. And they're going to displace millions and millions of workers. And it's not just drivers, so driverless cars are safe. Around about 94% of all accidents today, all crashes, are in some ways down to human error. But the Google car has driven more than 2 million miles on public roads and has had barely a handful of accidents. Only one was even vaguely its fault. So if there's no accidents, there can't be any blame. And for those of us who watch TV, we know if there can't be a blame, there's no claim. So imagine a world where we're not living with personal injury lawyers. <laughs> to say there is some good news in this story. But the changes that we're gonna see are gonna have a major impact on the future of work. But do they spell a world where most people can't find work? My own belief is no, the speed of change is gonna have a big impact on people and is gonna catch a lot of people out. And as a society, that's something we need to be very aware of. But the changes will be positive. As long as humans have wants and needs, technology will address those needs. Machines don't determine our future. They might replace some of the things that we do, but that doesn't mean there's nothing left for us to do. Now, of course, intelligent machines will increasingly displace millions and millions of workers. But just as in the past, when Edison, Ford, Gates, and many others like them created new industries and new jobs that more than replaced those that were lost when mining vanished, the same will be true in the future. Increased demand for technology increases the demand for workers and services. So over the last couple of decades, we've seen the automation of many white collar tasks that hasn't corresponded to a reduction in the overall number of workers. So desktop publishing means we, we no longer need anything like the same number of typographers. But we do, of course, have far, far more graphic designers. Banks have the ability with cash bond machines, internet banking and voice recognition to have branch networks that are completely automated. They could eliminate hundreds of thousands of jobs and the salaries that go with them. There was a trend in the late 90s, early 2000s towards internet only banking. Some of us might remember them. We might also remember that largely they failed. And the reason they failed wasn't because of the technology. We still use all of that technology today. But the reason they failed was because of the age old reason that people like to do business with other people. 
however good computers and robots get, a human will never treat them in the same way as they treat another human. Computers will never replace the creative qualities that humans have. They're never going to see the world in the same way. Amazon's another example. So I, I love Amazon. It's changed the way I shop. It's changed retail. But Amazon hasn't eliminated all of the jobs in retail. So whilst Amazon's given us convenience, the digital world hasn't replaced the human need to see things, to touch them, to interact with them and then go on and have conversations with other people who can empathise and understand our situations. Advances in technology mean that we'll adapt and we'll become more creative and the jobs of the future will be far more reliant on creativity than they ever have been before. As tasks are automated by robots, we'll grow to work with those robots. We'll come to rely on them. We'll even in some ways see them as colleagues. And I'm not certain we're ever going to go for a beer with them after work, but I suspect some of them are going to be pretty good at the pub quiz, so, so we might. <laughs> 1997 was a really big year for artificial intelligence. It was the year that IBM's Deep Blue became the first computer to beat a human chess world champion, Garry Kasparov. Now that doesn't seem like it today, but that was a really big deal. Newsweek ran the banner headline of the brain's last stand. And that one victory for artificial intelligence changed the game of chess. It caused it to evolve, but not necessarily in the way you would have thought. So the best chess player today isn't a computer. It's a human playing with a computer. So the human player listens to the moves suggested by the machine, but occasionally will override them, in much the same way we all do when we're driving our cars and using a sat-nav. In 2005, there was a freestyle chess tournament. The tournament could be made up of any combination of humans and or computers. There were grandmasters and the finest, most powerful, dedicated chess playing machines of the day. But the winners were two relative amateurs using very basic desktop computers, the sort of technology that was available to all of us. And the reason they won was because they were experts in collaborating with computers. They took the power of a machine, combined it with the creativity of a human and made a superpower. That has given us a real big insight into the future of work and our relationship with technology. Humans and computers don't think the same way. They don't approach problems in the same way and human strategic guidance is key. So surely it stands to reason that if computers make us better at chess, they make us better in other areas. So Deep Blue gave us Watson. And in 2011, Ken Jennings, the Jeopardy champion, was joking that he was the first game show contestant to be made redundant by a machine. But Watson, fortunately, isn't just brilliant at game shows. And one of its many other applications is medical analysis. So Watson's successful diagnosis rate for lung cancer is 90% in comparison to 50% for a human doctor. Watson that reduces the time that it takes to get personalised treatment options down from weeks to minutes. It's going to have a major impact on the profession of medicine. But the best doctors in the future will be the doctors who use technology in the best way. It's going to be the same with teachers. So imagine a world where a teacher trains alongside an AI to make them far better teachers, far more effective teachers than they've ever been before. A world where all of us have got access to the finest universities, the best tutors and the best courses, on demand and for free. That's the world that we'll soon be living in. But in other areas, technology hasn't quite kept pace with, with what we'd expect. So there's a fascinating project being run out of the University of Berkeley in California. And some of their finest minds are teaching a robot, Brett, how to fold towels. And unsurprisingly, they've succeeded. And over the last 15 years of working on this, they've managed to reduce the time that it takes for Brett to fold a towel from 24 minutes down to 90 seconds. Or in other words, far, far slower than the average eight-year-old. So whilst we've got technologies that are going to seem like magic, things that a young child would take for granted, like picking up a pencil or kicking a football, even occasionally tidying their own bedroom, are still a very, very long way off. So the gardeners and the cooks and the cleaners, it's a very long time before they need to worry about unemployment. One of the measures of a successful economy today is its unemployment rate. 
but we need to change the way we look at unemployment. Unemployment is a loud warning that we simply aren't being creative enough in facing and rising to the challenges that we've got as a world. And that education isn't keeping pace with technology change. If we fail to create the jobs of the future, the failure will be one of imagination, not from the predetermined workings of technology. I believe the future is shaped by people who believe in the future, by optimists. Not a wide-eyed optimism, an unfailing belief in the inevitability of success, but a blend of original ideas, deep convictions and resilience in the face of change. Jobs transform people's lives. And I'm certain that we'll create rewarding and stimulating work for a very long time yet in huge numbers. It's easy with the pace of change to forget what the real opportunities are, the chance to solve the big problems. Creativity is a uniquely human quality. Technology will free us, but it's our creativity that will allow us to overcome those challenges and make the world a better place. Thank you.